Hello noble ones, it's Matt Easton here of Scholar Gladiatoria and uh, I've got a special gift which has been um, given to the channel essentially by my good friend Raffaello over at Metatron channel and uh, you know sometimes we do nice things for each other us YouTubers but um, Raf's a, a good mate of mine and um, we have quite a lot of um, discussion about various things. Anyway he's been enjoying my Pelum videos um, and obviously he's a Roman expert far more than uh, than I am um, and you know he can even speak Latin and he can pronounce things correctly which I, very clearly I, I often uh, get wrong but anyway he's been watching my Pelum videos and uh, hopefully you've been watching those as well and enjoying them and I've got various other Pelum videos um, in the planning now uh, a few things that came out of the last uh, testing against armor uh, were things about the, um, the, I guess, the simulated uh, plate, so for plate armor, for lorica segmentata, and um, you know, I, I made lots of caveats within that video about the fact that um, you know plates in lorica segmentata do overlap. But conversely, the steel that I used was modern cold rolled mild steel, which is much tougher uh, than Roman era iron uh, plates and indeed probably thicker than most uh, Lorica segmentata plates. But of course, Lorica segmentata, around 50% of the total surface area overlaps another plate, although not all of the plates do. So when you hit a real Lorica segmentata, obviously you might hit a thinner plate. Uh, you might hit, a thing, in other words, a single plate, or you might hit an overlapped, uh, uh, a doubled up plate, essentially, where you've got overlap. Um, that being said, even if you hit a double plate, you could still get the bending effect that we saw in that. There were also um, lots of comments about the fact that the way that I supported the plate, like a bridge, meant that it was more likely to squish. Yeah, that's kind of true. Um, but equally, I think if I put it on something like a cushion or a pillow, which I will do, uh, because there's clearly a, a desire for me to do that, um, I think that you'll still see the bending effect, at least to a very large degree, because frankly, a pelum hits with quite a lot of energy. Um, it's a relatively heavy, in terms of missiles, the normal things we see hitting, hitting armor, like arrows and crossbow bolts and stuff, a pelum's a lot heavier. Um, and it doesn't snap or collapse in the way that arrows often do. Um, but I did mention um, that I wanted to test the pelum against other things, and uh, Raf uh, is uh, a fan of me <laughs> lobbing my shaft all over the place. Um, and the other thing that I want to address as well is people always make comments about distance and range, and the simple fact is there are two things which massively limit how far you can throw a pelum compared to a modern Olympic javelin, okay? Number one is the object itself. A Roman pelum is not designed for range in the way that a lighter javelin or a, a modern Olympic style javelin, not in terms of the shape of it, the aerodynamics of it, or the balance of it, or the total mass of it. The fact is that a Roman pelum is clearly not designed for long range. They had javelins in the Roman era, lots of people were using javelins that were designed for long range and they look completely different to a pelum. Okay, so a pelum is very, in my eyes, very specifically designed for armor penetration or shield penetration or just call, call it penetration um, at relatively close range. But nevertheless, people always criticize the range at which I throw things. Now, the point I made in the comments was that um, in terms of energy in a missile, actually, because when you throw a missile further, it has a trajectory. And as it goes up, it loses energy. And as it comes down, it gains energy again. Now, what's interesting is with things like arrows and javelins, spears, um, even with bullets to an extent, at long range, the energy is not, is surprisingly not really notably, particularly less than at close range. Um, so, um, in, in practical terms, so if I throw a, a, a spear of any kind, a javelin, at something which is 10 meters away, or if I throw it at something that's 50 meters away, the impact energy is 
is going to be a bit less, but it's not going to be terribly less. And you see this with Todd's videos testing arrows against things as well. Right, now, um, I'm going to come on to the main point of this video, and that is to thank uh, Raf um, for sending something, for sponsoring basically the channel. Now, uh, we, our channels in the past have collaborated on various things, and we have quite a close relationship. I support Raf on Patreon, and he supports me on Patreon, which is a some symbolic, obviously that cancels that, but that's a symbolic thing. It's a symbolic fact of the fact that I really respect what he's doing on his channel, and the type of research and depth that he goes on certain subjects. We saw this recently with uh, the matriculations uh, uh, thread, basically, with the back and forth, where honestly, Raffaello's video, I think, was the final um, stamp, uh, the final bit of information that we needed on that, because he's the expert, uh, certainly amongst the common YouTubers that you guys probably watch, on linguistics and certain, you know, Roman stuff and all sorts of other things. Right, so he's sponsored the channel. Now, this is, that's right, this is an unboxing video, which I know some of you hate and some of you love. So there we go, this is for those of you who love it. He has sponsored the channel with a cardboard box because he really wants to know how a pelum penetrates, no. He's put a sponsor the channel with whatever's inside this cardboard box. Now can you guess? Can you guess what's in the box? And I haven't, for once, I haven't given away what's in the box uh, with the title or the description. Um, but um, I'm going to unbox it here for you. Now, uh, genuinely, I haven't opened this up. This came to me, it actually came to me uh, yesterday or day before, I can't remember now. But I've deliberately left it um, closed because I wanted to do an unboxing on camera, partly to make this video a bit more fun, but also really as a thank you to Raf because it's very generous, generous of him with his own money. Uh, to sponsor a video on my channel. But, that being said, what I'm giving back here is, apart from lobbing my shaft around, um, what I'm giving back to the community and to RAF is we're going to do some collaboration, hopefully, which will be um, useful for both of us. Right, so, here we go. We've got the box. We've got the box open. What do you reckon's inside? Do you reckon a shield boss? A buckler? Um, it might be something that I'm going to throw a pelum at. Something like what could what would be applicable for me to test with Mapilum? Uh, well, let's uh, get it. it's well wrapped up in here. I'm sure some of you have guessed what's in here already. Here we go. Oh, I'm sure you guys just love the sound effects, the bubble wrap here. Oi, there we go. So, did you guess it? Did you guess it right? There's the little cap. There we go. Stick that on my head. I look like an egg now I'm wearing that. Right, so, um, here we go. It is a, um, a um, modern, obviously, <laughs> not original, uh, modern Indian, might be a good idea to take my glasses off. There we go. It's a modern um, Indian made uh, replica of a Roman uh, coolers or helmet. Um, I think it's a Type H, if I remember correctly. Um, we'll talk more about the helmets. I have actually, um, so, uh, uh, demonstrating the fact that Raf and I have been collaborating, um, even behind the scenes actually, but even on camera for a little while. I did do a video ages ago where I actually looked at a Roman helmet and the design of it, and I talked a bit about them. And that was actually Raffaello's helmet. He'd actually ordered it in the UK. And it came via me, and I you know, forwarded it on. And, um, oh, he picked it up. That's right, actually. It was when he was coming to the UK. And um, so that was very nice of him to send that one before. But he sent me yet another one. So he is, Raf is the guy that sends me Roman helmets. Now, this is a Roman helmet with a difference in that this is for me to destroy or attempt to destroy. I don't know if I'm going to be able to, but I'm going to, rather than just destroying it in like a trash compactor or with a sledgehammer, I'm going to attempt to do two different weapons on this, which relate to video series that I have done in the past and which I was con intending to do anyway. One of those is the pelum, obviously, because we've been talking about my shaft quite a lot. Um, so I'm going to be lobbing my, uh, my pelum at this and seeing what happens. I'll talk a bit about the material and stuff in a second. Um, and also, do you remember I have a Dacian Falx? And do you remember what Dacian Falx are famous for? That's right. So I'm going to have a go on this with, with my Falx. Now, because I want to get two weapon tests out of this, I, I might do it in one video, I might do it in two, I haven't decided yet. But I'm not going to try and overly destroy it with the PLM because I want to keep it in some sort of usable shape to um, to use with, with the Falks on. Now, 
Off the bat, I feel fairly confident that the Falks will make a real mess of this helmet. The Pelham, however, I'm genuinely not sure. Now the reason is, let's take this off because this is making it weird for me to hear, actually. Let's take that off as well, there we go, because I know you prefer my bald head to an um, egg-like cap. Now, um, the main point is about shape, and this comes back to the Lorica segment after testing. What's interesting is the material of this is thinner than the mild steel that I tested before. So I was using 1.5 millimeter, um, roughly 16 gauge um, mild steel. This is 18 gauge mild steel, okay? Um, but it has been shaped. Now, the shape does two things. It can work and harden the metal in some cases, although the mild steel that I was using was cold rolled, so it should be work and hard, work hardened to some extent. But this is thinner mild steel. Now, this is actually probably relatively historically accurate for the thickness of a lot of Roman helmets that were made. A lot of people think um, that armour was thicker and heavier than it actually was. And even if we go to the medieval period, when it has to be said during the 14th or 15th century, armour did tend to be, or some bits of armour, like helmets, tended to be thicker than helmets had been in earlier periods, whether it's Anglo-Saxon and Viking, or all the way back to a Roman era, these earlier period helmets tend to be made of iron rather than mild steel. Okay, we're just talking about a little bit of a carbon content difference there. Iron is nevertheless a bit softer, but it's also a bit more ductile. Um, but they were also relatively thin, okay? And a lot of reenactors today tend to use, maybe not Roman reenactors, but especially for medieval reenactors, tend to use bits of steel that are actually thicker than some of the original ones are. We get complicated, this sort of issue gets complicated when you get into the 15th and 16th centuries because a lot of uh, thin plate armour was hardened carbon steel by that point, and a lot of modern reenactment armour is made of mild steel, so that gets complicated. But is this a good analogue? Well, it's not 100% historically accurate because obviously this is a mass-produced Indian item with modern mild steel. Modern mild steel is not the same as Roman era iron, number one. Number two, the thickness is probably in the original Roman helmet bowl, the thickness would vary. So it would probably be a little bit thicker at the top and it would come down thinner at the sides as it was um, uh, essentially drawn out um, and uh, raised is, is the correct term for it. Um, but that being said, it's not it's not a million miles off, it's an approximate analogue. Now, why is this interesting for the Pelham specifically? Well, because we've looked at what Pela do to shields. The simple fact is we know that in the Roman era, a lot of the enemies that the Romans were fighting weren't wearing Lorica Segmentata. Obviously, when Romans fought other Romans, they were. But generally speaking, the people that the Romans were fighting, at best, were wearing either male or scale armour. And in many cases, they weren't wearing any such uh, armour, nothing as protective that, as that at all. And we saw what the Pelham did to the riveted um, Indian male. And lots of people correctly criticised the fact that modern Indian male, the rivets, are maybe not as strong as some period male for the medieval period. For the Roman era, I'm not so sure. There are some differences of ring size and that kind of stuff. But anyway, that's a topic that I'll go into more depth in, in future videos. But this, this helmet is, is important because, of course, if you're throwing Pila or any type of other type of javelin at an opposing force that have shields, it's either going to hit the shield and potentially hit the person behind the shield, or if it misses the shield, what it's most likely to hit is a helmet. Now, in terms of helmets in the Roman era, this is pretty much one of the best, most protective types of helmets that you're going to find in the Roman, whether it's Republic or Imperial eras. It's, it completely covers, obviously, the top of the head, the front of the head. It's got a, this a deflective um, brim up here. It's got cheek plates. It's got a back neck plate, which is very important if you're using large shields because of people coming over the top of the shield and, it, uh, and the blow coming over here, as we found when we did uh, gladiatorial training. Um, so it's a very, very protective shield. And basically, whatever this shield can hold up against, I think is fairly representative of what the best helmets in the Roman era could have been expected to do against a Pelham or any other type of uh, weapon. So, um, the, the curved shape, will it deflect? Will it dent in? Will it, uh, will it penetrate, maybe? Will it penetrate through there? I don't know. 
So we're going to find out. We're also going to mount this in such a way that it has some give to it, like a person's head does, but we're also going to put something inside to simulate a head. Um, I'm not entirely sure yet, but I've got some ideas. So that's the first thing. Secondly, once I've done tested it with several throws with a Pelum, then I'm going to have a go at it with the Falx, probably in a separate video, and we'll see what the Falx actually does to this type of helmet. And maybe see why the Romans felt a need to change and change the design and adapt these helmets and add to them. Final thing I want to say, um, apart from thanking uh, Raf again for sending this, and stick this back on my head, is that these are by themselves uh, very, very interesting helmets. If you haven't seen my previous video, um, if you search in my uh, Roman playlist, so remember I've got playlists on my channel, go and check out the Roman playlist, I think it's in there. Um, you can also search in my videos, just search for, for Roman or, or helmet and it'll probably come up. Um, but these are amazing protection, but they also represent a style of helmet, which is essentially a helmet bowl cheek pieces and something at the back, which actually covers a broad geographic area over a very large period of time. And these are in many ways connected to later helmets that we see in Anglo-Saxon England, Frankish um, France and Germany, and uh, the Viking era Vendel type helmets and everything else. So they, in many, many ways, uh, these are connected to early medieval helmets as well. Um, in terms of Partly in terms of the construction, not so much because they go more into Spang and Helm uh, construction later on, uh, which is frankly easier to make. Uh, possibly in some ways stronger as well, but anyway. Um, and But in terms of coverage and what they cover, very, very similar. So there we go, folks. I hope that's going to be fun. Um, and uh, give me your ideas, recommendations. If there are things you'd like me to see me do in the test or not do in the test, things that you think I can rectify or clarify from previous tests. And again, thanks once again to Raf for sponsoring uh, this video series with that helmet. And uh, hopefully you'll be seeing me on his channel and him on, him on my channel talking a bit more about Roman stuff because as always, I might be the maybe the medieval expert, relatively speaking, but he's the Roman expert, so he can bring a lot to this discussion, I think. Thanks for watching, and um, yeah, I look forward to your comments underneath this video. Take care, folks. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers, folks.